Thank you, love. You know, it doesn't even seem like our house anymore. Yeah, it looks pretty strange, doesn't it? Mm. It's funny to think I'll probably never see this room again. Well, actually, lovey, I think you probably should come back here after school, and I'll meet you here so we can make sure we didn't leave anything. What about the bookstore? Oh, I called Melinda this morning. She said that she and Judy and uh, Sheila would cover for us today. So that means we can take our time unpacking. And hopefully by tomorrow, maybe we can get ourselves back on a regular schedule again. You think we'll be all unpacked by tomorrow? Well, we're going to have lots of help. Ellen's coming over. Valerie. And Kate's coming by after school. So with everybody pitching in, shouldn't take all that long. Heck, you know what would be a good idea? Why don't you invite some of your friends home from school? Maybe they can help you get set up in your new room. I don't have very many close friends this year at school. Why is that? Because you went away to school last year? I suppose that has something to do with it. Except that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you all went through junior high together. I mean, some of those kids you've known for years. Yes, I know. Well, it's early in the term yet. You'll probably have lots of friends by the time the school year, school year is over. No, I don't think so. Why not? The other kids think I'm, I don't know, different. Different? How? Old fashioned. I don't go to their parties and stuff like that. Well, uh, why not? I mean, if you're invited. I just would feel uncomfortable. There's a lot of drinking going on, and so I hear. Really? <laughs> the boys get the older guys to buy beer for them. I don't know, I just don't like the sounds of it all. Not that I get any invitations anyway. Well, I'm certainly glad you realize that's not the sort of thing you want to be involved with. But, God, I find it hard to believe that the parents would allow that sort of thing to go on in their homes. Oh, it's usually not in their homes. The kids go someplace that's out of the way. They either drive up to a lake or... They go find a friend that's older and has an apartment. Sometimes they go to an empty field or in the woods somewhere. Well, that sounds like they're just asking for trouble. Mm, I think so, too. Does this go on often? Mm. There's always a party somewhere. I hear all the other kids talk about it. Mm. Well, honey, if that's why they think you're different, I have to tell you I'm glad they do. Well, I just hope you don't feel all left out of things. Oh, I feel on the outside of everything these days. Oh, honey, certainly not everything. It's all, it's all my own fault anyway, but I'm not complaining. I like it better that way. I really don't feel like getting involved in things these days. I don't even feel like I'm alive most of the time. Well, I better go. Bets. I love you. Have a good day at school. I'll try. that man. First she says he'll be right back. And then she puts me on hold. Ridiculous. Hello? Well, finally. Lisa, is that you? It most certainly is me. I know. I have been trying to get in touch with you, and I know you have been avoiding my, my calls for a long time, but I will get you sooner or later, Grant. Lisa, I haven't been trying to avoid you. Oh, come on now, Grant. I left messages for you yesterday, several, but you didn't bother to return a single call. But you know, Grant, that's perfectly all right because I am just as angry right now as I was when I made the first call. Lisa, I was out of the office all day yesterday. I had no idea you were trying to reach me until I got in this morning. Uh-huh. 
I see. Well, I called you the day before that, too. And Tom pretended he didn't know where you were. Oh, he, he wasn't pretending. I had to take a short trip outside of town to see a client. Tom knew nothing about that. All right. Let's forget about all the excuses. The reason why I am calling is I want you to know how I feel about your sending that Detective Lewis up here to quiz Bennett. Well, I have a pretty good idea how you feel about that. Well, at least I'm sure by now that you also know that your little plan backfired. Because our sheriff gave a very lovely speech defending Bennett. And I don't think you're going to get any more cooperation, and neither is your little detective. Uh, Lisa, now, Lewis, it wasn't my idea to send him up there. Now, he has proof that the man he has in custody couldn't possibly have tampered with the brakes of my car. Now, look, he, he isn't just going to drop the case. He wants to try to find the guilty party. Well, that has nothing to do with Bennett or me. Lisa, I really don't want to argue. Anyway, it's good to hear from you. I trust you're all right? I am just fine. But I am not going to be fine if you keep on hounding the man I'm going to marry. Do you want to... Oh, what's the matter? I didn't bother to explain anything to him anyway. Bennett, what... Morning, Annie. <sighs> well, for heaven's sakes, how long have you been standing there? Well, I just walked in. Oh. Who was that on the phone? That was Grant. And I just got through really telling him off I don't think we're going to have to worry about him anymore. It's just what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> I was wondering if you were planning to use the public dining room for your party tonight. If you are, I'll have to start getting it ready. No, no, heavens no. It's just four of us. It'll be far... No, that's too big for four people. You want me to set things up in here, then? If you would, just sort of like we did the other night. So we'll make it a buffet, I think. But use the silver and the china and pretty flowers. I'll take care of it. Okay. Is that the morning mail, Hester? Oh, yes, it just came in. These are for you, Mrs. Conley. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, got a letter from Nancy Hughes and from Kim. Isn't that wonderful? Your friends from Oakdale are obviously missing you already. Oh, I miss them so much. Not too much, I hope. Oh, well... Oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to be going back very soon, Bennett, I promise. Certainly not before we're married. Oh, I'm just so glad I got my notes off to them when I did. What is it? I wish they used a different glue on these things. I can't get the thing open. Would this be of help? Oh, thank you very much. I think it's simple. Yes. Oh, very good. Thank you. I carry this with me most of the time. Oh. It comes in very handy. Well, always prepared, I see. I don't use it just for opening letters. I've used it to pry open windows and doors. They stick sometimes because of their age. I see. Well, thank you very much. I'll go get started on the flowers. I hope your mail is more interesting than mine. Oh, yeah. It's from Kim. Um... She says that she's getting ready to move with the family. They're going to be moving on... That would be today. She's moved... Today's her moving day. Well, she's going to move into that, uh, the complex where Bob lives. Mm-hmm. I see. Oh, it's such a lovely place. It's really, uh, not a complex. It's more you of a townhouse. You know, I really hate those, uh, those modern apartment buildings. Everyone's stacked up on top of each other. There's no privacy. Oh, darling. I cannot wait to have my friends come here and... See where we are. Oh, they're going to be so envious of all this space. Well, I wouldn't invite them until... Until what? What, what? Well, uh, until we have, uh, have more rooms uh, ready for the guests. I don't intend to wait that long. Besides, I can't wait for my friends to get up here. I want to, to show you off. And I want them to really get to know you in your own surroundings. Grant? Oh, Bob, come in. How are you? I'm fine. I don't want to interrupt anything. No, no, you're not. No, no. Come on. Uh, Mary thought that Tom was still here. I wanted to take him to lunch. I dismissed him. How are things going? <laughs> little hectic. I'm flying to London tomorrow. That's what I wanted to talk to Tom about. Oh, yeah. Well, well sit down. Sit down. Thank you. You going on business or pleasure? Uh, a little of both. Uh, I want to spend some time with my sister, Penny. Well, I envy your trip. London is my favorite city in the whole world. I'm afraid I won't be there very long. Have you talked to Lisa? Yes, I talked to her earlier this morning. How is she? 
Furious as usual. Detective Lewis went up to Norwich and questioned Bennett Hadley again, and naturally Lisa is blaming me for the whole thing. You know, if there is the slightest chance that Hadley has something to do with this, Lisa should get out of that inn right away. Try telling her that. Excuse me. Yes, Mary. Oh, yes, have him come in, yeah. Lieutenant Lewis. Well, I'm sure you two have things to discuss. No, no, Bob, stay here. Look, if he has some news, you should hear it. Are you sure you don't mind? Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, come in. Okie doke. You know Dr. Hughes? Yes. How are you, Dr. Hughes? I'm fine, thank you, Lieutenant. Good. Uh, Lieutenant, I'd like Bob to stay here. He shares my concern about Lisa. Mm -hmm. Well, I went up to Norwich yesterday, spoke to Mr. Hadley, and I spent all day yesterday trying to confirm his story. His story? The day that uh, Mr. Coleman's brakes were tampered with, he claims that he was in his room at the Oakdale Motor Inn working on a book that he's been writing. Were there any witnesses? I talked to a lot of the people that worked at the Motor Inn. None of them can remember any specific dates, but they did say that Hadley spent most of his days working in his room. Well, that doesn't mean he was there on the day in question. No. He did make several room service charges that day, but without knowing what time he made them, it's no proof of anything. What it comes down to is a case of our suspicions versus Bennett's story. It doesn't mean anything unless we come up with some hard evidence. That's right. Although I... Although what? Is there some evidence? Nothing that would hold up in court. It's just that my years on the job taught me to observe human nature very closely. It may not prove anything, but it gives me some interesting in insights. This man, Hadley, is a very strange person. In what way, Lieutenant? Well, I know he has a vicious temper that he's constantly fighting to keep in control. The whole time that I was interviewing him, he was clenching and unclenching his fist. There was anger in his eyes, almost as if he wanted to rip me apart with his bare hands. I've seen that look. I know I don't have anything to back it up, but I really feel with provocation and the loss of control, that temper could cause Bennett Hadley to do almost anything. your uh, publishing company, you know, back when I ran the bookstore. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, yes. I, I love the things that you published, and always look forward so much to the uh, new list that came out. Well, obviously, you have excellent taste. <laughs> I'm ever in Oakdale, I'll have to stop in and take a look at your store. Well, you, you could do that, but I, it's, it's not anything really special, nothing impressive. Oh, no, I like all bookstores. I could spend hours browsing through the bookshelves because... Like people, each store has a personality all its own. Yes. Tester, will you watch what you're doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind about that. I do wish you'd learn to be more <coughs> careful. Benny, dear, I'm very sorry, Esther. Uh, well, Bennett, I want to thank you again for having my nephew and me over here this evening. Quite welcome. You know, it's not often that I get an invitation to a wonderful dinner like this. <laughs> Of course, I know that uh, Derek is the main attraction tonight. Oh, no, don't be silly. <laughs> we enjoy having both of you here. Uh, yeah, you're very gracious, Mrs. Coleman. Please call me Lisa. I think Mrs. Coleman, that sounds so formal. I don't want to be formal with my friends. All right. Lisa. Such a lovely name, and it, uh, it fits you perfectly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then, uh, may I have just a touch more? Oh, of course. Here, I'll do it. Well, thank you very much. It really is good wine, don't you think? Excellent. <laughs> oh, uh, Dr. Vic, uh, did you tell Derek that Bennett's a writer? I thought he might be interested, you know. Oh, I'm very interested. Are you working on anything at the moment? Yes, he is. He's writing a novel. Well, I'd very much like to see some of it while I'm up here. No, there's nothing uh, 
There's nothing I'm ready to show just now. Oh, now, Bennett, now you're just being extra modest. I'm sure you have something that you can let Derek read. No, I don't have anything. And I think I'm the best judge of when something's ready to be looked at. <laughs> but, Bennett, I mean, I'm sure that Derek is used to reading over things when work is still in progress. And uh, I think that now that he offered to, you could at least comply. <laughs> well, uh, Derek, how long do you plan to be in Norway? Well, just a few more days. I'm not really on any special timetable. But now that I know there's such fascinating company available in Norwich, I just may extend my stay. <laughs> I, love it. I definitely want to take you and Bennett out to dinner one night before I go back. Oh, we'd love that. But I uh, don't know the restaurants in the area, so you'd have to give me some help in choosing one. Well, I'm afraid I'm not much of a help on that because I'm kind of a stranger here myself. <laughs> Bennett, what would you think? I'm afraid we're going to have to decline your very kind invitation, but uh, Lisa seems to have forgotten that we're busy for the next few evenings. Well, then I will have to extend my stay. You just let me know when you're free. That would be just lovely. Uh, I think I'd like a little bit more of this wonderful wine. Lisa, I mean, don't you think you've had enough wine? Oh, no, I haven't. No, no, I've just, I have a, just a little bit more. It makes me feel warm and relaxed and just... Well, it really is a lovely one. It is. Thank you. Well, I hate to say this, but... Derek, I think it's time we started to head home before the storm gets any worse. Oh, no, Dr. Becker, please not yet. Well, I'm afraid the driving's gonna be pretty bad as it is, what with the wind and heavy rain. Yeah, I think he's right. We uh, should go, much as I hate to. But first, a toast to a very beautiful and extremely charming hostess. Well, thank you so much both for the housewarming gift. Well, my mother always said it meant your table would never be bare in your new home. Oh. <laughs> and we wanted to welcome you to my neighborhood. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I got it at this wonderful little bakery on South Street, and it was warm when we picked it up. <laughs> you were supposed to be here earlier, but I was the one that made us late. Oh, well, I'm just uh, sorry you missed everybody. David and Ellen and Valerie and Kate, everybody here helping with the move. And then, of course, everybody stayed for dinner, which they very kindly provided. <laughs> <laughs> what has Valerie heard from Alex? Well, uh, of course, he writes that he misses them terribly, and he really is enjoying his work in, in South America. Oh, but he has some great stories when he gets back. Yeah. Oh, Betsy's going to be disappointed. She missed the two of you. This has been such a long day. She was exhausted. She went right up to bed. Yeah, I bet she was. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask you, when are you leaving for London? Tomorrow. You going to be there long? I don't expect to be. No. Oh, I suppose you'll visit with your sister while you're there. Oh, yes. I'll uh, spend as much time as I can with Penny. Don't you wish you were going? <laughs> oh, I would be going if it wasn't for Ian being in the hospital. I'd love to see Penny, and I adore London. Oh, I know. I do, too. Listen, why don't you invite your sister home for a visit? Now, I would love to meet her. <laughs> I'll certainly do that. Okay. Young lady, I better get you home. Oh, I'm sorry you had to rush off. Well, I've got a breakfast date with my son tomorrow morning, and I still have some packing to do. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Good night. And happy trip. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. Bye.